It's become a little bit of a tradition for me to do something wrestling themed on or around the time of Wrestlemania and this year's no different. I still watch wrestling every now and then just a little bit but I'm not the fan I was back in the 90s. Speaking of the 90s, on the original Game Boy there were a handful of wrestling games to come out in the US, the bulk of which were licensed by the World Wrestling Federation with only two that were not. One from WCW, and then this game, HAL Wrestling. HAL Wrestling was programmed by Human, the company behind the biggest series of wrestling games that aren't licensed by any wrestling company, Fire Pro Wrestling. The first Fire Pro game came out in 1989 for the PC Engine, so it wasn't terribly long afterwards that this game saw a release. In Japan, the game was titled simply Pro Wrestling. Yeah. Like the NES game, actually this game plays very similar to that game, which is not much of a surprise because Masato Matsuda, who programmed the NES Pro Wrestling, went on to work for Human Entertainment and surely had his hands in both this game and Fire Pro. Even some of the animations here are similar to those in the other two games. Unlike the somewhat cartoony characters in the Black Box NES title, this game takes a route closer to Fire Pro in the presentation of its combatants. Just perhaps not quite as obvious to your average American fan. I'm not 100% certain, but all of the characters here seem to bear more than a passing similarity to a number of wrestlers who happened to work for All Japan in the late 80s. On top of the eight playable characters, there is also one boss character named Mr. Who. I doubt he's based on any wrestler in particular. He just seems like a masked boss who can do every character's moves, including standard and signature. And speaking of the moves, this game actually has a surprising amount of them. Even the start button is used for grapples and mat attacks. And among the different wrestlers you'll find in the game, you'll find little variations on their styles, including brain busters instead of vertical suplexes, or German suplexes instead of belly to back. Different running attacks for the wrestlers are also quite common as well, and when you compare this game to most of the other Game Boy and even other 8-bit wrestling games out there, you have more moves per character here. Impressive when you think about it. With the exception of King Samson, whose signature move is a lariat, all the other signature moves and attacks in this game are completely unique as well. Like with Black Box Pro Wrestling, it's a bit of a button masher, but the gameplay is still pretty solid. All you have is a single match or a 4 on 4 elimination mode, no tag matches, no specialty matches or anything like that, but that never really bothered me. If I were to choose the biggest negatives about this game, I would say the presentation is really, really generic. As you've seen throughout this review, the graphics are really not anything special. Most of the wrestlers have the same body types except for their heads, and they're all fairly small. The ring and the audience are pretty bland looking too. The design of the audience, I guess you can say it was meant to represent a captive Japanese wrestling audience. But one thing I will say, at least they're animated, not too many 8-bit and even some 16-bit games have that. Unless there was something that was released in Japan that never saw the light of day over here in the US, this one is probably the absolute best of all of the wrestling games on the original Game Boy. If you've never played this one and you're into wrestling games, then this is one you may want to check out. Hope you've enjoyed this review. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.